fuck you till the break of day. So dance with me. me, 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 me to, to, to. Get on a dog leash, man. Find me, find me, Tim. Find me, find me, find me. Find me. I gotta go get this bitch. Oh, they got a the man on a dog leash, y'all. The man on a dog leash. Look at this. It was going on in G2. In this short clip, you will see 17 year old Cortez Barry the day before his birthday being tortured and humiliated by the gangster disciples. Get it, boy. Man on a dog. The man of dollies, y'all. The man of dollies. Now, how did he end up in this situation? Cortez Berry was 14 years old when he was arrested in connection with a 2011 armed robbery in Augusta, Georgia, in which two victims said four males approached them with firearms and demanded money. The suspects struck one person in the back of the head, stole the keys to a Ford F-150, and fled in the stolen pickup. Barry was charged with aggravated assault, theft of a motor vehicle, and robbery, but was sentenced to probation in juvenile court. But Barry's probation was revoked in November 2013 at age 16 for violating probation when he was arrested on burglary charges and he was sent to prison for eight years, seven months, and 26 days. He was first sent to Augusta Youth Development Campus and was transferred to the Medium Security Correctional Facility when he turned 17. Department of Corrections statistics indicate in comparison to other Georgia prisons, Burress does not raise flags. The facility, which held 86 juveniles and reported no serious injuries or incidents the last fiscal year and confiscated just 31 cell phones. NBC News reported that more than 13,500 phones were confiscated in Georgia's prison system in 2014, which amounts to about a cell phone for every five prisoners. Cell phones are often used to commit and plan crimes outside of prison, but also to incite violence and to extort family members who are incarcerated. Prison officials have installed equipment to scan visitors for cell phones and other electronics. But most of the time the guards are the ones smuggling the contraband into the prisons in exchange for cash or sex. The day before Cortez Barry turned 18, a group of gangster disciples approached Cortez. They told him, bro, you might as well go ahead and join the GDs because you're about to turn 18. At 18, he would be moved from the juvenile side of the prison to the adult areas of the prison. Barry refused to join. Then seven to eight boys jumped on him, savagely beat him and choked him until he was unconscious. Before posting the viral photo of Cortez showed being held captive. The gang members called Barry's girlfriend from an untraceable phone number demanding $150 for the safety of Cortez. They hung up and minutes later, the men called back and demanded $300 but hung up before his girlfriend's mother could get the phone from her daughter to ask questions. Shortly after the calls, the girlfriend found the cell phone photo on Facebook of Barry beaten and being held captive in a cell. In the photo, Cortez Barry is shirtless and kneeling on the ground with his left eye swollen shut and two men standing behind him. A rope is tied around his neck like a leash, and one of the men has the end of the rope looped tightly around his hand. Posted the pictures on Facebook with the caption, When you disrespect the nation, it brings nothing but pain and suffering. As soon as Cortez's mother seen the photo online, she quickly called down to the facility, but no one answered. His aunt lived closer to the prison, so she drove to the prison. She notified the prison staff, and they were clueless to what was going on. At the time, they were not aware of the violent attack. He was attacked and beaten at 3 p.m., and the prison guards did not check up on him until 9 p.m. The prison guards had no clue what had happened to Cortez, and when the prison staff found out about the situation, Cortez was separated and put into protective custody, and both of the men standing behind Cortez in the photo were transferred to another prison. The family of Barry sent the photo to the local Augusta radio station, and when the radio station posted the photo on their Facebook page, the post instantly blew up and it brought a lot of heat to the prison and they were forced to release a statement regarding the incident. 
After the incident, the two prison guards that were on duty during the attack resigned and Barry was transferred to Smith State Prison located in Glenville, Georgia. Smith State is a level 5 high max prison which is one of the worst and deadliest facilities that house the most vicious and savage criminals. Smith State has seen more homicides in the past five years than any other in the system. Cortez's mother believes the prison staff sent her son to a more dangerous prison in retaliation to her talking to the media and bringing heat to the prison. The firing and arrest of the prison's warden is just the latest development in an ongoing investigation that has covered prison contraband, corruption, and even murder. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation announced they'd arrested Brian Adams on charges of racketeering, bribery, false statements, and violation of oath of office. The arrest comes during an investigation of contraband coming into the prison. The prison is also at the center of a 2021 murder investigation. Investigators say suspects, including a Smith State inmate, plan to murder a prison corrections officer to hide the contraband. Instead, they killed one of the officer's neighbors, Bobby Kicklider. Adam. A Georgia correction officer is dead after an inmate attacked him with a homemade shank. Now the Georgia Department of Corrections announced today that a correction officer, Robert Clark, was killed at Smith State Prison. The Smith State, State Prison is just unfortunately one of the worst ones that we're seeing right now. Since the start of the year, the Georgia Department of Corrections says there have been at least five homicides at this prison alone. Cortez was finally released from prison May 15, 2020 at the age of 23. But unfortunately, six months after his release, Cortez and two other men, 18-year-old Kazari Middleton and 18-year-old Marquise Harris, were creeping one afternoon when they rode past Johnson's Beauty and Barber Salon on Eve Street. Marquise Harris was the driver. He stayed in the car while Cortez and Kazari walked into the barber shop, both armed with a 45 and a 38 caliber handgun. At the time, Barber Megwell Freeman and his client Wyman Scott were in the shop when Cortez and Kazari attempted to rob both men and ended up shooting both men one time and the victims instantly died from being shot. The suspects fled. A local witness that called 911 reported that they heard five gunshots and watched a silver car that pulled off and was able to provide the license plate number. The car was eventually pulled over with Cortez Barry not inside. Police found a 38 caliber handgun under the seat where Middleton was sitting. The weapon, which had been reported stolen a week before the killings, both Kazari and Marquise were arrested and charged with two counts of murder, two counts of criminal attempt armed robbery, and two counts of possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. Middleton had a prior arrest history as a juvenile for burglary. His defense attorney asked the judge to consider Bond because he held a steady job since he was 15 years old. Middleton was also signed up for the Army and was expected to begin basic training soon, but both suspects were denied bond and remain in jail. Cortez had been on the run until he was caught a few months later in January of 2021. He was charged with two counts of murder, felony criminal attempt armed robbery, possession of a firearm during a crime and parole violation, while Middleton and Barry denied any involvement in the killings, Harris told investigators the barbershop robbery was Barry's idea. Harris said he was driving and waiting outside in the car while Barry and Middleton went inside. He heard several gunshots then Barry and Middleton came out, got into the car, and he drove off. All three suspects remain in the Richmond County Jail waiting for trial and sentencing. They possibly all face a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. Please stay, dance with me, you don't have to admit you wanna play. Dance with me, just let me rock you till the break of day.